Hey, Michael, it's Day, and thanks so much for the work on Cycle 2. Crushed it. I thought that was really great. Um, the plan was solid, and then you went out and taught it. The lesson looked great. And then I really appreciated your reflection on student performance at the end. That's exactly what we want to see from the beginning and, a, and an end. You had that compelling question. Kids got engaged. You gave them a pretest. They didn't know what to do. They were confused. That's all right. They worked in the middle of the lesson. The pretest sort of gave them a lens for what they're looking for took a post-test at the end of the lesson, then you evaluated what they knew, didn't know, and you had some really great thoughts in the reflection about how to move forward. Um, this cycle is going to be all about that, how to move forward with that specific class. Um, so one and two, I give you credit for both because you knocked those out last week. Excellent. Um, we're going to focus here on the, I didn't end up doing student talk, uh, the middle of class, uh, reading strategies, and then uh, some group strategies are the other thing that I'm layering on. Uh, to the third cycle this time. So you're going to have a strategy worksheet and a lesson plan. I'll go over in those in just a second. Those will be due December 6th, uh, which is Thursday. Um, and then the middle of class, uh, the, the part two of that cycle will be due the next week, December 13th. That's where you reflect on the lesson and, of course, share the video that you use to record it. So here's what I'm thinking for this, uh, for this cycle. As you see, I'm using your quote to guide what we're doing. I thought this was a great reflection, Michael. Uh, I could use different group abilities to work at different rates through the workbook. This will help those gaps be able to take a slower pace. The growth students could then be given the challenge work, while the other students get a basic set of problems. This will allow me to spend more time with the gaps and let growth work more independently, uh, thus keeping the whole class working great. And so the way I kind of hear that is that your advanced kids can kind of have a longer leash, maybe work on, a, work on something at a quicker pace or maybe a more advanced pace, which is appropriate. Your proficient kids might have a decision there to make. Do they kind of do like a basic stuff. Do they do some of the advanced stuff too? Partially proficient. They probably need some supports to master that content. Um, and then your unsatisfactory group, they're way behind, right? And so they might need a lot of work from you, time from you, and more more supports. Cool. So we're going to make this group based in this middle of the lessons, which sounds like you've already done, but I'm going to ask you to try it out again so I can see your planning, see how you teach it, and then hear your reflection. Um, first thing I want you to do Let's take a look at some of these resources. So there's a reading on group roles and why group roles are important. Uh, then there's a resource on group roles that has some ideas of how you could give kids group roles. Um, then <clears throat> there's a reading on peer evaluation and then there's similarly a peer evaluation resource, sort of like a rubrics where students can evaluate themselves and their peers uh, based on the group work that they did. Um, and then we have a couple links to some pre-reading strategies and some during reading strategies. Those are from our literacy module. Sorry, I can't make this stuff go away. Those are from our, our literacy module that you might remember doing, but I just kind of gave those as some support ideas. Certainly just give those a quick glance. You don't have to use any pre and during reading strategies for this, but I was thinking if you have four different groups working on different tasks at different speeds and maybe they need different supports, the pre and during reading strategies could be some of those supports to make sure that the group is working and being productive maybe when you're not worth with the group. Obviously, your, your advanced group may not need the pre and during reading strategies where your lower groups may need more of those or more hand-holding through those. Um, that's totally up, for you, up to you to make the decision about. But I thought those would be good ways, uh, good strategies to help those groups differentiate their supports, um, knowing that a lot of times you use the textbook as like that group piece in the middle of class. Cool, then I've got some questions sort of about the readings uh, about group roles. And then I would like to know what group roles are you going to use in this lesson? Are you going to use the ones that I gave you? Do you want to add some different ones? Knowing your class and the content and the grade and your students, some of those roles might not be necessary. Other roles might be necessary. It's totally up for you uh, to choose those roles. Um, but I'd like to know what roles each group is going to have. Um, and then some thoughts on peer evaluation. Then I'd like for you to use what peer evaluation uh, rubric of sorts. You could use one of the resources or you could take one of those resources and change it um, to something that, uh, that, you, that works for you and your kids. Um, but I do want every group member to critique every group member in every group, and you can look at that after the lesson to see how it goes. Um, that peer evaluation should obviously come after the group work. Um, it could be your exit ticket or your mastery check, but if you notice from the peer evaluation resources that I shared, uh, they don't have content questions. Um, so you wouldn't really get like mastery data. You wouldn't know what students learned and still didn't know at the end of this lesson if you only used the peer evaluation. So there might be a way to give the peer evaluation with another exit ticket or amend the peer evaluation to have some content questions. 
Um, or it could be two different activities. The group work could take place earlier, they do an evaluation, then you collect those. They might do something else, work independently or something, then you give an exit ticket later. Um, but for this lesson, I do want you to have a peer evaluation for every student, but I also want to make sure that you're getting something from the students that you can evaluate and see growth or see the gaps that may still be existing. Um, and then, like I said, uh, the reading strategies, I was kind of having you think about your groups, advanced, proficient, partially proficient, unsat, and then based on those reading strategies, what might be one good ones that fit in there. Again, you don't have to use the reading strategies, uh, but they could really help for this. So at least give those strategies a look, give this part a look, and then see if you think that you need these pre and or during reading strategies during group work. And then the, the next activity is then uh, I took your reflection about student growth and I sort of bucketed the, bucketed the students into those mastery buckets. Um, what I want you to do is with this group sort of spell out any major gaps that they share uh, that you really want them to work on, that you know they have to have time with. And then next steps, what do you actually want them to do during group work? Are they reading a text and doing something? Are they filling something else out? Are they writing something? Are they reviewing something else? Are they going back to quizzes and finding the answers and fixing those? Uh, you should probably be involved with some of the, the groups that need the most support. So maybe you're actually leading some activities or taking part in the activities with the groups. And then supports needed. I think group roles and the peer evaluation could fit here. Also, any of those reading strategies could fit here. But maybe the students need some other supports. Maybe they need sentence stems. Maybe they need graphic organizers. Maybe they need, you know, a variety of supports. So basically for each group, I'm asking you to plan related but different um, activities. So, you know, maybe this group is doing some extension work. This group is doing work at the objective. This work, this group has some scaffolds to get, you know, they're close to mastering the objective, but they aren't quite there. Maybe they're working on some things to, to push them up there. And maybe the, the unsatisfactory group, maybe you're really like teaching basic skills or you're having discussions or you're modeling like behaviors or mindsets you want to see. I don't know what it looks like. It's totally up to you. Um, but each of these groups should be doing something with similar content, right? Something related to whatever you're studying and accounting. Um, but at different levels. And you can go back to those questions uh, that we looked at last week, the depth of knowledge that can maybe inform some of the activities they need to be working on. That'd be a smart move. Um, yep. So you're going to fill that out and then you're going to work on your lesson plan, um, which will look the same as it has been. I did put a couple notes in here. Essential question. I do want essential questions. You know, it doesn't have to be, it probably shouldn't be the organization one we used before, but it should be something about students' life that allows you to bridge to the content. Um, so looking at the objective, hopefully you can think of a question that's applicable to the student's life and not the content, and then you can find a way to bridge from their responses into the content to show that natural, like a real world connection, show that this has a real life place in their lives. Um, and then similarly, I said this in the video already, this closing, that could be where the peer evalu evaluation could come, but do know that the peer evaluation sheets that I linked to don't have any content questions. So you want to get that peer evaluation information, but you want to get a measure for how your students did that day too. So you may need to have an exit ticket and a peer evaluation or rework one of the peer evaluations to include some content questions. Um, cool. That's what I've got. Again, I would like to see what we just looked at, the worksheet and the lesson plan by December 6th, and then find a time to teach it that next week and get your Edthena video and your reflection in. And then, you know, we're basically at holiday break and we can sort of look and see uh, what the best path is uh, moving forward next semester to finish up your licensure. Um, be in touch as you need me. Thanks so much for the great work last cycle. Really excited to see what you're going to do this time. Have a good one.